Hello, saints. How's everybody? Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, my hand, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Yes, everybody, how are you all doing today? I hope you all are being in oneness with the living King, the risen King, who was and is to come. He is mighty God, and He's so gracious to us, everyone. Today, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that I received in the Spirit. And um, I'm also going to give you something very interesting today. We're going to be talking a little bit about signs here. We're going to be talking about the um, elements of the earth, everybody. Earth, air, water, you know. The elements, everybody. We're going to be talking about the wind. and This is about the elements of everyday life, everybody. Okay? Now, we have to be careful because we're not supposed to worship these things. Some people are worshiping water and air and the stars and the moons. And that's when you get into um, temptation, uh, idolatry. Because you're making these things your God and worshiping these things and zodiac signs and all these things. And we're not supposed to be doing that, everybody. All right. We're supposed to worship the one in living, true, risen God, our Lord and Savior who rose on that third day. But I'm going to be talking about this is going to be very, very interesting and very, very important. I'm going to just give you a few verses on some things that's been given to me in the spirit as well. And um, you all just stay with me. Let's bless this. Invite the presence of the Lord in the place. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was and is to come. The God Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Alpha and Omega. The risen King. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love, your overflowing love. Let your love rain down on us, manna from heaven, Father. Glorious God, we worship you this day, now and forevermore. Let us praise you always. Seek knowledge and wisdom. We say when we seek you with our whole hearts, we shall find you. Father God, may you bless on each and every listener and the sender, Lord. Father God, is anything in us that's of darkness, that's not to your liking. May you remove it in Jesus' mighty name so we can receive your word, Father. Let your angels of mercy be bring down heaven. The mercies of the Lord be over us in this place. Your anointing of the wine and the corn and the oil flow like riven waters. We may not thirst, but for your word be quenched. Let us not quench the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, we praise your name forevermore. Thank you, Father, for all who have come by the channel. Thank you, Father. This video is covered in the blood, everybody. Yes, 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 yes. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross, and I know it was the blood that saved me. I hope you all are having an awesome day. Yes, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying through your troubles, through your problems, through your situations. Yes, God said, told me that the Holy Spirit gave me the verse that is in... Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Okay, everybody? We must continue to wait on God, anticipating His promises, because hope is delayed to be fulfilled eventually. See, sometimes we can veer off and go the wrong direction, because we could be waiting so long, so long time for something to um, happen in our life. And we get sick and tired of waiting, and we don't think it's ever going to happen. So we can get into diverse temptations, do those type of things. But God said that we are to build our hopes in Jesus Christ, okay, through his righteousness. He will fulfill his promises in due time, in due season. 
everybody. So don't get dismayed or discouraged. All right. Also, I received the steps in Psalms 37, 23, I believe it is. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. All right, everybody. Also, I want to talk Hosea 10, 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come. And rain righteousness upon you. All right, everybody. And Hosea 10, 13. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruits of lies, because thou didst trust in the way and the multitude of thy men. So Jesus said to trust him, to trust him, to trust him. He doesn't like wickedness and evil. And he said, just wait on him, you all. I received um, something in the spirit last night. Whereas... The Lord, um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said vaulted ceilings. And then he showed me in a vision the high ceilings like churches in the dome part of the church. You know the dome inside of a church, how pretty it is, and the dome part, that eggshell type shape. He said vaulted ceilings. So churches are going to be built for the Lord, everybody. I know some are so discouraged about the way some churches have been going in this world, but God is really to raise up a church um, that is built with his anointing, okay? Um, he is going to be building. Churches are going to be built. Um, he wouldn't have given me that for no reason. So um, for those of you who are discouraged from church going, have been church uh, hurt by church, church hurt. Okay, um, Jesus is restoring His church, and He showed me, and He spoke to me in the spirit, vaulted ceilings, and showed me the domes of the churches. So um, churches are going to be rebuilt again, everybody, in different places all over the land. The churches are going to be rebuilt, and people are going to be worshiping um, continually, continuous worship. People are going to be coming back to the Lord, everybody in the churches. So that's a word um, to take along with you throughout the day. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is worthy to be praised. God is big on his church, everybody. And church is in our hearts, okay? So don't just look at the buildings, okay? The buildings is just a place that we go to worship. But church is, is in your heart. All right, everybody? So, everybody, let's talk... For a second, pray that all of you are doing well. Let's talk for a second about the creation for a minute. Okay. Now, on Genesis and day one, God created light. Day two, the atmosphere and the firmament. Day three, dry ground and plants. Day four, sun, moon, and stars. Day five, the birds and sea creatures. Day six, the land, animals, and humans. Day seven, rest and Sabbath day. That Sabbath rest, rest, everybody, which is so, so very, very important, right? All right, everybody. God created the heavens and the earth. Six days rested. On the seventh, which became the Sabbath, everyone. Okay. All right, everybody. Now, we worship God. Let's worship God in this place. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit for the coming word that I'm getting ready to give, everybody. And remember that Psalms 37 Two, three, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. So Jesus talks about um, delighting your way in him. Not this world, not in people, but delighting your way in the Lord, okay? And he will add everything um, else after everybody. 
So, now, we talk about the ground, the plants, the dry ground and the plants in day three. Day three was creation, the dry ground and the plants, okay? Now, now talking about the fallow ground in the Bible, There were barren lands in uh, Isaiah 35, 1 through 7, were barren lands. And we talk about the fallow ground. Now, the, the, the fallow ground, I'm planted for a period of time. Fallow land is not land left to rest and regenerate. It has to be plowed. The ground must be broken up to break up the large clumps of earth until it is soft and ready to receive uh, new seed, everybody. Okay. Just says in Hosea 10, 12, it says, Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come. See, this can also be talking about somebody that's not walking with God. See, God said to turn away from wickedness and walk in his way, everybody. Because you want to reap the harvest, and you want your seeds to be growing and planted. Okay? All right, everybody. Now, earth. In Hebrew, earth is Eretz, E-R-E-T-S, which is ground and land. Okay, now just like the four corners of the earth in Isaiah eleven twelve, Adama, A-D-A-M-A, -A -A, is ground, soil, or earth. All right. Now, wind, wind is animals, Greek, to breathe or blow, a gust of air. All right, now Ruach is spirit, breath, or wind. Okay, now on Learning Center Home Science Tools dot com, we talking about these elements here. This is very, very interesting, everyone. Just like in science class, you learn these and use in school. Years and years ago when you were younger, about the science of your elements, everybody. Very, very interesting. Very, very important in life and how we, we think and do things, okay? Earth, water, air, and fire. Earth, water, air, and fire. The theory was suggested around 450 B.C. All right, everybody. They are the temperaments of a person that a person could have, everybody, all right? Earth, water, air, and fire. The four elements every day. The first element is earth. It's a full, uh, is, is, uh, the earth is full of a wide variety of rocks and minerals, which provides the soil to grow vegetation and support life. The two most common elements in the Earth's crust are oxygen, 46%, and silicon, 28%. Because it is the most abundant mineral in the Earth's crust, silica, silicon dioxide, more commonly known as sand, silica is a major component of glass. How can glass be made out of sand? Interestingly, when silica is heated, it melts and becomes glass, hardening as it cools. All right, everybody. Second, element water. Okay, the water has many unique properties. The chemical formula of water is H2O, meaning it has made of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. The hydrogen atoms each attach to one side of the oxygen atom and have a positive charge, whereas the oxygen atom has a negative charge. This polarizes the water molecule much like a magnet, giving a water molecule positive and negative ends, everybody. We definitely need water, right? Third is element is air. Air was considered a pure element, but in fact, the air that's all around us is made up of a variety of gases, primarily nitrogen and oxygen, with almost 1% argon, and even smaller amounts of carbon dioxide and other elements such as a krypton and helium. 
the comp compositions of air is just right for life on earth all right everybody we use a lot of oxygen we get from air everybody plants breathe carbon dioxide and photosynthesis right remember learning that in school back in the day fourth element is fire how does fire work it closely is closely linked to air fire needs three things in order to exist oxygen fuel and heat the intensity of a fire varies because it is dependent on oxygen fuel and heat available to it to it when all three of these things are in a controlled situation such as in candles or a campfire fires are considered helpful but when one or more of these things are not controlled, such as in a wildfire or a burning building, fires can easily become very dangerous. Well, we know that everybody, right? Now, Jesus talks in the, bio, uh, in the body, in the Bible, I'm sorry, about fire, all right? Sometimes Jesus talks in the Bible about fire in a way of judgment and punishment. And sometimes he talks of fire in a way of Holy Spirit. Okay, now in the natural, the fire is an element of heat to heat up things. Okay, now just like on firefighterinsider.com, um, fire is for passion, birth, death, rebirth, for even hope, destruction, transformation. All right, the fire is an element of fullness of life associated with the sun, which is summer, it's associated with fire and moon. Earth is the opposite direction of fire and therefore corresponds with midnight. Winter and the new moon represent bareness, transformation. Okay, everybody, where the old gives into the new, the empty fertility ready to feed new creations. Air, the element of air is new beginnings, youth increase, creativity as such, associated with spring. The waxing moon and sunrise, they are growing warmer and brighter. Flowers and plants give birth to a new generation. Water is the element of emotion and wisdom, particularly the wisdom of age. It represents a time past, the peak of livelihood, moving toward the end of a cycle. Fire is associated with strength, activity, blood, and, fi and life force. It is also seen as highly purifying and protective, consuming impurities and driving back darkness. Fire is traditionally seen as the most rare, uh, the most ratified and spiritual of the physical elements because of its masculine properties, which were superior to female properties. It also lacks physical existence, produces light, and has a transformative power when it comes in contact with more physical material. Air is the element of intelligence, creativity, and beginnings largely intangible and without permanent form. Air is an active masculine element superior to the more material elements of water and earth. The qualities are warm and moist. Gender is masculine active. Okay. When cold, dry, rough, irregular, unstable, mobile, subtle, light, power. All right. Now, the National, Graf National Geographic.org, when is the movement of air caused by the uneven heating of the earth by the sun? You feel its force. It is the great equalizer of the atmosphere, transporting heat, moisture, pollutants, and dust, great distances around the globe. Hurricanes, cyclones increase with intensity, with wind, everybody, right? The hurricanes come with great wind. Air represents intelligent mental intention, connection to universal forces. Earth represents grounding the foundation of life, substance, connection to lives, paths, and family roots. Fire represents energy, a tool for transformation, personal power, and inner strength. Water represents emotional relief, intuition, and inner reflection. See, in the Bible, everybody, God talks so much about um, these different things. He talks about um, the way we um, feel, um, the way we act, um, things that cause us to act in a certain way. So these are just the different temperaments that are controlled within us, everybody. And these are symbolizations 
of how things are governed, okay, the meaning of things spiritually, okay, because we know that God, when he made man and woman, God, see, God uh, breathed his breath in us to give us life and we became living souls, right? So that's the breath of air. That's the breath of life, all right? We need that. We need air to breathe. All right. Jesus said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So air is very essential for us to have. Every living thing must have air, right? In order to live. Okay. Now, Adama, the ground soil or earth. A-D-A-M-A, -A, Adama. All right? And you can see the word Adam in that. So in the creation of, 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 the, of the earth, of the world, it's so very, very important to understand the meaning of things. See, the soil and the ground and the earth is very important. The land, all these things are very, very important to God. Okay? Because... We know that God tells us to feed off of the land. Okay? This is spiritual growth. All right? We can use uh, things from the land for food. All right? Grow spiritually. Give us strength, fire. Okay? A, a fire can give you strength. A fire can give you light. When you're in darkness, the fire... Say the fire of a match. You can get light from it. Right? Alright? Then the fire of God could be a protection around you from God. Spiritually. A spiritual protection around you. Okay? The holiness of fire. He, can, he will consume the evil things that try to come up against you. God is a consumer of fire. Okay? So that's why it's important to know these things. God gave me. The Holy Spirit gave me. Earth, wind, fire, okay, these things, and we add water, okay, now some say that the air is like fire, okay, but um, the air represents new beginnings, creativity, intelligence, because we have to realize that we must have air to breathe, all right, and um, we can't live without air and oxygen, right, everybody? It says it's a new a element of new beginnings and creativity, okay? It's for, like, warmer climates. Sunrise, things grow, flowers and plant, plants give birth to a new generation, okay? So certain seasons, these um, have meanings for certain se seasons. Water is the emotion and wisdom, particularly the wisdom of age. Um, it represents a time past the peak of livelihood, moving toward the end of a cycle. See, when I was in school, science was the least subject. If somebody say, Lisa, what's your uh, least subject that you like? I would say science. I never really liked science. I really wasn't too interested in science. But now that I'm a person that teaches the Bible, I must know about things about science. Okay? So in order to understand the Bible, science is involved. Okay? Because these things go into play with the Bible, everybody. Okay? Now, these things were given to me, and obviously they were given to me for a reason. God want me to understand how things work. Um, the growth process of, of earth and um, the meaning of how we come into air and water and the ground and things of this nature. So now I'm um, getting into trying to learn different aspects of things that I never was really interested in because now that God wants me to be more knowledgeable 
of certain things, everybody. Okay. Now, air, the qualities is warm and moist. The gender is mask a masculine, is active. Okay. The air is superior to more material elements of water and earth. All right. It's intelligence and creativity and beginnings, largely intang intangible and without permanent form. Okay. So we know we need air to, to breathe. We need water um, in our bodies. God cleansed us spiritually with water. He was pierced. Water and blood came out of him, right? So that's very, very important. These things are very, very important. Everybody. So this is so, so very interesting. The wind is cold, dry, rough, irregular, unstable. See, these things can be like our temperaments. Sometimes we are like the wind. We, we could be cold. <laughs> we could be dry. We could be rough acting. We could be irregular, unstable acting. All right? We could be a little subtle acting, light, you know, acting. Um, these go with our temperaments. Okay? One day you could be... Nice and warm, warm acting and warm feeling. And one day you could be unstable in the mind, or irregular and arguing and fussing. Okay, and one day you can be in a subtle mood. One day you could be in a rough mood. Oh, leave me alone, not today. I don't want to be bothered. You know. So it's it's, te it's different temperaments, um, of ways of feeling. Um, and thinking, you know, air is represents creativity, like your creative mind, your intelligence um, is what air represents everybody. And we know that um, fire is associated with the strength and activity, the blood, all right? God is... Through his blood, we are saved, all right? It's through his holy ghost fire and anointing that we are saved, forgiven, and healed through the blood of, of, of the lamb, right? All right? Now, the fire is highly purifying and protective. It's consuming. That's why we say God is a consuming fire. Impurities are driving back darkness, okay? The consuming fire of God what it drives back darkness, right, everybody? So fire is traditionally seen as the most, uh, the most rarefied and spiritually of the physical elements because of its masculine properties, which were superior to the female properties. Also lacks physical existence, produces light, and has a transformative power when it comes in contact with more physical material. See the Holy Ghost fire and anointing. You want the Holy Ghost anointing to catch fire on each and every person, right? It's good to be anointed with the Spirit of God in your life. And when the enemy try to come up against you, you want his all-consuming fire, that force of his strength to come up against us for protection. All right? So the fire is a protection property for us. It can give us light. It can give us protection. Okay, everybody in the Spirit. Okay, the water of rapid your emotional release, your intuition, and inner reflection. You know, sometimes you can have an intuition of something, and you don't go along with that. Sometimes your intuition, you don't want to listen to it. Okay, you suppose, might suppose to go left and you go right. So water represents an inner reflection of self, your intuition, everybody, right? So, um... The air, the qualities of air is warm and moist, moist. Okay. Now we know that some air is, is, is when it's moist outside and you look at you can have air, you can have um, moist weather, rain with the come with the air and the rain. You can have um, um hail, sleet, okay, the moisture, dew is moisture, the dew. On the roses in the morning to do. Okay. Now certain things. These really. Have a lot to do. 
with how we interact. Okay, like I said, you can in, have uh, interact with roughness, roughly. Okay, be subdued and secured in one way and rough, cold, dry, regular, and stable like the wind. All right. So um, these things are very, very important. I like the fact that air represents new beginnings, youth, increased creativity, you know, all right? Now, a lot of times, um, air represents the, the flower and the plants giving uh, birth because the plants grow off of air and oxygen. They need oxygen and air, photosynthesis to breathe. You water your plants with water, all right, and they grow, all right? And water is the emotion of wisdom and age and time's peak of livelihood moving toward the end of a cycle. All right. So these things is very, very important. Like I said, I never really um, was really into science. I hated science, really. <laughs> that was my least favorite subject. But now, so I'm ignoring now to correlate it with the Bible. It can be very interesting now to me at the age that I am now because when I was younger, I was not interested in anybody's science. I did well in science. I remember one time I defracted, dissected a, a, a frog in, in biology class and them type of things, which I really didn't like doing. But I always got good grades in it, but it was not my favorite subject, everybody. So, um, just know that God is going to be building new churches. He gave me vaulted ceilings and the domes of the churches. He gave me the vaulted ceilings. And um, I am praying for you all. May you pray for me. Positive prayers. May you pay pro uh, pay pr pray pos positive prayers. Just a second, everyone. Yes, everyone. Thank you. Yes, this has been very, very, very interesting. I, I hope you all have enjoyed this. This is um, very, very interesting, everybody, to know the different temperaments. Okay. And they're saying that fire is really linked to air. Okay. Because oxygen, fuel, and heat. Such as in the wildfires and burning buildings, fire can easily become very dangerous. All right. To extinguish a fire, the oxygen, fuel, or heat needs to be removed. Smothering the fire by placing a blanket or dirt on it works because the uh, first goes out, the fire goes out without oxygen. The earth provides an abundance of fuel in the form of wood and fossil fuels, such as coal. When the fuel is removed, the fire has nothing left to burn and is extinguished. Water often serves as the effective cooling source by removing the heat from a fire. This is seen when hot lava from an erupting volcano enters the ocean or when a bucket of water is dumped on a campfire. That's very good to know, right? Fire creates light, heat, and smoke by rapid chemical reaction called combustion. I heard of that. Smoke is the result of the incomplete combustion, the burning of, of a fuel. Particles that were not burned become suspended in the air. Smoke is often dangerous because it contains harmful gases that can poison a person who inhales too much smoke, smoke inhalation. You might be surprised to know that our bodies also use combustion to produce energy from oxygen to food through um, metabolic processes. We need a steady supply of oxygen to keep our bodies functioning normally. If there's too little oxygen in the air, we'll suffocate. At the same time, we can be thankful there's not more oxygen in the air, or the chemical reactions in our bodies will speed up, causing us to soon crash and burn. Too much oxygen in the air will also increase the risk of fires on the earth. Since nitrogen and argon are not very reactive, air is pretty safe for us. All right, everybody, that is very, very important. That is very, very important, everybody. That was so interesting. I learned a few things. I learned a few things. I also know that you are not supposed to put water on a grease fire, everyone. We're not supposed to um, put water on a grease fire. I believe you can cover that with dirt. Uh, we're not supposed to put... Um, water on a grease fire 
because that can just make it worse. I do know that. I remember um, when I was little, when I was younger, they had the thing, the TV commercial used to be stop, drop, and roll if there was a fire. So they say that you would be better off closer to the ground or the floor rather because the, the fire rises. They say you would be um, better off to stop, drop, drop, and roll concept. I remember that. Um, and I remember the Smokey the Bear. Was, remember when Smokey the Bear would come on about the forest fires? Hi, I'm Smokey the Bear. <laughs> remember that, everybody? Um, fire intervention was very, very um, big. They was very, very big. They wanted kids to know about that. Stop, drop, and roll. I remember that. They used to do those type of things back in the day. Well, everybody, I'll say a prayer. And I pray that someone learned a little something a little different today that they might not have known. And um, I thank you all for your comments on the videos. Let's remember to pray for our loved ones, ourselves, um, those we know and don't know. We love everybody. Um, God just give me random people in the spirit like he did last night. And I just pray for those. Whether I know them or not, you just keep praying. Ask God who you can pray for. You all, so just be blessed and oneness. God will heal you. Seek him with your whole heart. You may find him, he says, when you seek him with your whole heart. So everyone, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for that you are a consuming fire, your Lord. We thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, may we praise you. May we reverence you, Father. May our temperance, temperaments be subtle not rough and harsh and hard. Father God, remove the stony hearts, place it with a heart of flesh, Father. Father God, may we pray for our unsaved loved ones, Father. Lord Jesus, may we be blessed coming in and going out, Father. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Lord, you know all things. You know what we stand in need of. May our needs be fulfilled. Father God, may we stay and your covenant. May you pray for us, Father. May we pray for others. Father God, I just thank you because you are so awesome and you are so mighty. Mighty to save and mighty to heal. Father, I thank you for using me as your vessel. May I always stay ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in your works, O God. Father God, may this video heal somebody. I thank you in Jesus' name. Be blessed, you all. Bye-bye.